Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this session of geography, we shall discuss the path 2 of Indian geography. In the path 1, we have discussed the geographical extent of India in the world. Now we shall see the geographical extent within India, the divisions in India based on geography. So first we shall see the physiographic divisions. What do you mean by physiographic divisions? So physiographic divisions means the divisions which are done based on geography. How the land is divided based on geography or the terrain is divided based on geography. So there are six physiographic divisions in India. What are those? The first is the northern mountains or the Himalayas. And the next is the north Indian plains or the great plains or the great Indian plains. The next is the peninsular plateau and the next is the great Indian desert and the next is the coastal regions or the coastal states or UTs and the next is the island. So these are the six divisions based on geography in India. Now we shall discuss about them in detail. So moving on to the first one that is the Himalayas. So Himalayas formation is explained based on continent continent convergence. I have told you in plate tectonics. There are uh, plates in the world. So whenever the plates converge or diverge, there are some phenomenon which happen. So India actually it is on based on Indo-Australian plate and it co this plate has collided with the Eurasian plate. So when these two collide, one will go down and one will be up. So as a result, some mountains are formed at the juncture of these plates. So these are the Himalayas and the Himalayas are the youngest mountains in the world. They are around 5000 years ago, 5000 years old. Okay, these are the youngest fold mountains. We call them as fold mountains. Okay, group of mountains. Okay, they are caused because of the folds on the land. Okay, because of the continent continent convergence of the both Eurasian plate and Indian plate, the Himalayas have emerged and they are 5000 years old. And the next is the divisions in Himalayas. The first is the Trans Himalayas or the Tibetan Himalayas, and the next is the Greater Himalayas or the Himadri, and the next is the Lesser Himalayas or the Middle Himalayas that is Himachal, and the next is Shivaliks or Outer Himalayas. And the next is the eastern hills. Himalayas have a bend at the, the Dihang Gorge in Arunachal Pradesh towards the eastern side uh, into the Nagaland, Manipur, all those. They are called Purvanchal. Puru means east, right? So Purvanchal, the eastern Himalayas. So these are the five divisions in Himalayas. So what are those first? We shall see. The first is Trans Himalayas, the outermost part of Himalayas. They also extend to Pakistan. Afghanistan and some part of uh, China too and also India okay these Himalayas are above the the greater Himalayas and as they are more mostly in the part of Tibet that's why they are called as Tibetan Himalayas okay and uh, the famous mountains called Zanskar K2 the other name for K2 is Godwin Austin these people have climbed those climbed this mountain K2 that's why it is called as Godwin Austin and next is the Ladakh, the Karakoram, the Kailash ranges, Mount Kailash. We call it as Ma Kailash Manasarovar Yatra. The Mount Kailash is very famous because the Lord Shiva resides as per Hinduism above the Mount Kailash. And the edge of the Mount Kailash, we have the Lake Manasarovar. That's why people go to visit that place. It is in Tibet of China. Okay. And uh, Karakoram, all these are main ranges in the Trans Himalayas or Tibetan Himalayas. Next is Greater Himalayas or the Himadri. Generally, what do you mean by Himalayas? Him means snow. And Alaya means abode. That means Himalayas are the abode of snow. Okay, remember this. So Greater Himalayas are the southern of southern parts of the Trans Himalayas. Okay, and uh, their average height of the mountains in this is 6,000 meters. Minimum is 6,000 meters. So all the highest peaks reside in the Greater Himalayas or the Himadri, like Mount Everest. It is the highest peak in the world itself. Okay, it is actually in Tibet and in Nepal also, parts of India also. Okay, mostly it is in Nepal only. Clear with this? It is with 8,848 meters. And next we have Kamet, Kanchanjanga, and Nanga Parbat, Annapurna. All these are in the Greater Himalayas. Actually, the uh, highest peak of India is K2, but it is under 
Pakistan occupied Kashmir. So we can say now the actual highest peak is Kanchanjunga. It is in Sikkim. Okay, Nepal Sikkim border. So highest peak and peak we can say uh, Kanchanjunga. If India occupies that Pakistan occupied Kashmir, now K2 will become the highest peak. Clear with this? Okay, moving on to the lesser Himalayas or the Himachal. Uh, in this we have the high uh, average width between 3700 meters to 4500 meters that means 3.7 kilometers to 4.5 kilometers and average width is 50 kilometers of any mountains and we have the important range in these uh, lesser himalayas or himachal that is uh, the dauladar range the mahabharat range all these are in the lesser himalayas and we have the famous valleys called Kulu Valley that is in Himachal Pradesh, Kangra Valley in Jammu and Kashmir. All these are famous valleys. What do you mean by valley? Between two mountains we have the gap, right? So that is called a valley. So that it may air passes, water passes, all those river pass through these valleys. That is called as a valley. So valley is a very beautiful place where we have the beautiful scenery pictures. You can take a beautiful scenery pictures. A very beautiful place and uh, moving on to the Shivaliks or the outer Himalayas so these are the southernmost part of the Himalayas and it is famous for dunes like Dehra dune in Uttarakhand Kotli dune or Patli dune all these are famous for dunes dunes are also longitudinal valleys okay and uh, the mountains range from 900 to 1100 meters okay it is not uh, kilometers it is meters okay and uh, moving on to Purvanchal or Eastern Himalayas. So why they are called Eastern Himalayas? At the Dihang Gorge, the Himalayas bend towards the eastern side in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, moving towards Nagaland, Manipur and Mizoram. So the Eastern Himalayas are called as Purvanchal. So what do they include? It includes Patkai Bam, Patkai Hills in Nagaland, Naga Hills, Manipur Hills or uh, Mizo Hills. All these are part of the eastern Himalayas okay the eastern Himalayas are the formations of the Himalayas only because of the bend of the Himalayas at the Dihang Gorge in Arunachal Pradesh so as they are on the eastern side of India that's why they are called as Purvanchal or eastern Himalayas okay moving on to see this is the eastern Himalayas you can see on the picture moving on to the other classification of Himalayas uh, some people classify on the area between the rivers so what is that the first is Punjab first some people say Jammu and Kashmir Himalayas Punjab Himalayas Kumaun Himalayas Nepal Himalayas and next is Assam Himalayas so this this is one type of classification okay next is North Indian Plains or the next physiographic division of India that is North Indian Plains or the Great Plains so what do you mean by plain plateau mountain hills I'll tell you the difference so plain means the normal ground level which is very plain that is called a plain we can do agriculture on it so plateau means elevated flatland the ground level flatland is plain P-L-A-I-N and the elevated flat plain is called as plateau we have Deccan Plateau, all this. So almost flat land will be there above the plateau. It, but it is at a height. Then what is that a mountain? Mountain means it has a sharp summit at the top. Hill means it doesn't have a sharp summit. Okay. Mountain doesn't have a flat one, but it has a sharp summit. But the rugged one will be a hill. Hill range means if you have two or more hills, Shesha Shalam hill ranges, Nallamalla hill ranges. We have group of hills okay hope you are clear with the difference so north indian plains are the great plains so plains means it is the normal ground level flat lands okay, we can do agriculture on it right we can do grass grow grasses on it like that so great indian plains are made fertile because of the indus brahmaputra and ganges rivers so these ganges rivers are present in this north indian plains so because of these rivers generally people settle where the water availability is more right so people have settled of the Aryans or Indus um, Indus Valley people have settled at the river places only so these North Indian plains are fertile because of the Indus Ganges and Brahmaputra 
रिवर्स ओनली बिकॉज रिवर्स ब्रिंग ए फर्टाइल सिल्ट विच इज वेरी यूजफुल फॉर एग्रीकल्चर द वेरी फर्टाइल सॉइल इन इंडिया इज अलिवियल सॉइल द हाइएस्ट लैंड इज कल्टिवेटेड इन अलिवियल सॉइल ओनली दैट इज ऑल्सो इन नॉर्थ इंडियन प्लेन्स ओके एंड दिस नॉर्थ इंडियन प्लेन्स इज डिवाइड इन टू फोर रीजन्स वॉट आर दोज विशल सी द फर्स्ट इज the babar belt so what is this babar belt so babar after descending from the mountains the rivers deposit some pebbles or small stones so that region is called as babar belt okay so in this region the the small small streams will stop moving from one place to another because of the pebbles it is around uh, 8 to 16 kilometers in the length or breadth okay or length from the himalayas it is almost the southern part of the himalayas after the shivaliks okay and the next is terai and terai lies to the south of the babar belt and uh, after as the streams have disappeared in the shivalik sorry in the babar belt they reappear in the terai belt so as the they reappear it looks like a marshy land like a uh, what do you say clayey land okay it looks like a mud and water mixed one okay so if you see some forests in water it looks like that that's why it is called as swampy marshy land remember this swampy marshy land is a terai belt because as the streams reappear the next is the bangar and khadar so bangar means older alluvium remember khadar means newer alluvium okay so as it is older alluvium bangar it is less fertile and the uh, particles also very uh, high size or coarse in nature and khadar is newer alluvium it is replenished okay it is uh, replenished every time so that's why it is called newer alluvium it is very fertile in nature and the grains will be very smaller size in nature okay and the kankara or calcareous deposits you can find in and calcium deposits you can find in bangar ones so hope you got this point about babar terra and khadar and bangar okay remember next one the peninsular plateau what is a peninsular a land surrounded by water on three sides if it is four sides it is an island if it is three sides it is peninsula where do we have peninsula in india in the southernmost point right the southernmost part of india there is a peninsula it is covered by indian ocean arabian sea and west bengal right so that's why it is a peninsular plateau and it was formed through the drifted part of the gondwana land we have seen laurasia and gondwana land in the continental drift theory explained by alfred wegener right those so are the plateau of india that is peninsular plateau is divided into two parts that is the central highlands and deccan plateau so the dif- what is the difference between central islands and deccan plateau the top most of peninsular plateau is central islands and the southern most point is the deccan plateau in the central highlands we have the ba- bundelkhand plateau De- uh, bagelkhand plateau chota nagpur plateau malwa plateau all these are in the central islands and the next is deccan trap western ghats eastern ghats northeastern extension all these are part of the deccan or the deccan plateau okay these are the major difference between the central islands and deccan plateau the deccan plateau is formed because of the lava which has erupted out i have told you in the rocks lesson right so the uh, deccan plateau has originated because of that and the difference between western ghats and eastern ghats is the they join at a place called nilgiri hills okay generally western ghats are continuous range of mountains you can see in the diagram and eastern ghats are discontinuous they are not continuous and they they meet at a place called nilgiri hills in the tamil nadu okay remember this is a very repeated question western ghats and eastern ghats meet at a place called nilgiri hills clear with this generally the highest peak of uh, western ghats is anai mudi and the eastern ghats is some people say jindagada some people say mahendragiri kiri okay currently it is jindagada peak in odisha clear with this so western ghats are continuous and eastern ghats are discontinuous and they meet at nilgiri hills in tamil nadu okay and moving on to the indian desert that is to the northern western part of india okay uh, generally uh, it extends from uh, gujarat rajasthan and parts of haryana and punjab also but mostly it is extend from gujarat and 
the Rajasthan. Okay, and Indian Desert lies toward the western margins of Aravallis. Aravallis are the, are the oldest mountains in India. Okay, clear with this? And the oldest mountains in India, which are the youngest in the world as well as in India, they are Himalayas. Okay, and Luni River is a major river. We will study more about Luni River in the rivers topic. And the, uh, generally, the rainfall is very less, that is, uh, less than. 15 centimeters right 150 mm in a year hence they it has a dry desert conditions in the Indian desert moving on to the coastal plains so how many states do we have as coastal states so there are nine coastal states and three union territories that is uh, Puducherry, Daman Diu and Dadra Nagar Haveli and we'll talk about islands later that is uh, Andaman and Lakshadweep so first the peninsular plateau is flanked by the coastal areas from Gujarat, all those till West Bengal, right? Nine coastal states and three coastal union territories, which is the, this state has highest coastline, Gujarat. That's why Gujarat is the highest salt producing state in the India. Remember this, Gujarat is the highest salt producing state in India, followed by, and uh, highest coastline followed by AP and Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. So first is Gujarat, next is Andhra Pradesh and next is Tamil Nadu in terms of coastline. Okay, generally India has a coastline of 7516 kilometers, out of it 5400 is for states and UDs only, remaining is for islands. Okay, moving on, these are the coastal plains, we have Malabar coast for Kerala, Konkan coast for Goa, remember this Konkan coast for Goa, Kannada plain for Kannada, sorry, Karnataka and Kor Koromandal coast for Tamil Nadu and parts of Andhra Pradesh and Northern Circa as we will see in history also, that is for parts of Andhra Pradesh and uh, Odisha, okay. So Koromandal coast for Tamil Nadu, Malabar coast for Kerala, Konkan coast for Koga, we have Konkan railways also, right. Northern Sarkars for Andhra Pradesh and parts of Odisha. Okay, and moving on to the islands. So islands means all the four sides of a land is covered by water. So we have two islands particularly Andaman and Nicobar and the Lakshadweep islands. So totally we have 247 islands out of which around 204 islands are in West Bengal only and uh, sorry Bay of Bengal and uh, around 40 plus in the Arabian Sea. And a few coral islands we also have in Gulf of Mannar. Uh, it is at the border of Tamil Nadu between uh, India and Sri Lanka, right? And Anaman Nicobar Islands in Bay of Bengal consists of hard volcanic rocks. And Lakshadweep Islands in the Arabian Sea are formed by corals that we know. And the southernmost part of India is that is our Indira Point is located in the Great Nicobar of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. That is at six degrees four minutes. I've already told you. And it is also it was also called as Pygmalion Point, but it was now washed away because of the 2004 tsunami. So moving on to Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal. So it is divided into four: first North, Middle, South, and Little Andaman. The South and Little Andaman are separated by Duncan Passage. It is a repeated question. And Andaman and Nicobar Islands are separated by North. We have Andaman Islands. And south we have Nicobar Islands. That is a different, there is a division in Andaman Islands. North, Middle and South and Little. And Andaman and Nicobar Islands are separated by 10 degree channel. Why it is called 10 degree channel? Because 10 degree latitude passes through that water between Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So it is a repeated question. This was asked once in UPSC prelims also. So Andaman and Nicobar Islands are separated by 10 degree channel. Okay. And Port Blair is the capital of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The next is among the Nicobar Islands, the Kar Nicobar is the northernmost, and the Great Nicobar is the southernmost. Okay, the barren and Narkondam Islands of Andaman and Nicobar Islands are volcanic in nature. This is the only active volcano in India, the barren island and Narkondam Island. We have the famous bird also, Narkondam Hornbill. Okay, it is only found in Narkondam Islands of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Saddle Peak is the highest peak which is in Northern Andaman of Andaman Islands. Okay, and next is Lakshadweep Islands in the Arabian Sea. The earlier name of Lakshadweep was Lakadwe, Amindwe and Miniko Islands and the Lakshadweep group of around 40 
25 small islands in the Arabian Sea with the Kavarati as the capital and they were scattered around 200 to 500 kilometers and Amindivi Islands are the northernmost and Miniko Islands are the southernmost and they are having coral reefs also and the largest and the most advanced is the Miniko Island. What do you mean by coral reef? Coral polyps are a group of uh, animals they feed on the dead animals and they develop the coral reefs okay those reefs are food for the marine organisms okay the greatest coral reef or the greatest reef in the world is great barrier reef of australia okay that is the longest one okay so hope you have learned enough things in this topic we shall meet in the next sessions thank you